Thank you. Hello there, Roy. Hello, Are Roger. You well? Yes, fine, thanks. Yeah. Excellent, thank you. Um, can I ask about your squad, though? Are they well? I know you've had a lot of injuries recently. Is it looking any better going into the game against Brighton? No, not really. Um, James McCarthy trained today, which is very positive, of course. So uh, we'll see how he came through that. But uh, a couple of other players have picked up slight knocks that we've got to keep an eye on, so we don't know quite how well they'll, they'll recover in time for the weekend. So it certainly won't be a vast difference to how it's been the last couple of games. And if we're really unlucky, it could even be slightly worse. In terms, of those, in terms of those two players who've been involved and who are at the moment suffering from, from knocks and we're, we're monitoring them. Um, can I just more specifically on, on Wilfred Zaha? I know you don't like to put dates on when people might, might come back, but is there any indication about where he is in terms of his recovery? Well, he's still suffering from the, from the injury, there's no question of that. And, uh, the doctors in particular and the physios here were very anxious not to put dates on, on people, so they would be very angry with me if I was to suggest dates uh, when he might return. But he's working very hard to try and get back as soon as he can. And, you know, he has got good powers of recovery, so I'm rather hoping that the prognostic will be different to the actual time scale. Um, the big game coming up against Brighton. Um, after a disappointing result the other day. Is, is this a good opportunity almost for a reset? It's a, it's a passionate game. It's seen as a, as a derby of sorts. Um, is, it, is, it, is it one to perhaps get, get the team going again and get, get the passion going? Yes, I think whatever team we'd have played after the last two results where we've been below par, we'd have been anxious to, to show that we're better than that and that we have more in our locker than we were able to show in the last two games. So. The fact that it's bright, and I suppose, adds the extra spice because it's a game which is very important to our fans. Everyone at the club is very much aware of that. So, I think you know your point is is well made that it's a good opportunity to get out there and and show that the last couple of performances are are not what our fans can expect from us. And the game against Burnley, you I mean, conceded early goals, and you have done it a few previous matches as well against Leeds, Newcastle, West Ham as well. How do you get that? out of the team system. Is that something you've been working on? Is it something about you need to say to them in the dressing room before they come out? <laughs> yeah, you're beginning to sound like my wife on that one there. I mean, I think that there's very, very little in those terms that managers don't say to their players. And if you listen to managers and coaches in the dressing room before the game with their last minute exhortations, we'll cover every single thing that you could probably bring up. And certainly, I think there'd be very few managers and coaches who send their players out without making them aware that the opening 10 to 15 minutes are very important and it's very important in that period of time to be very solid, to be compact and not give away goals, to be very, very aware of the fact that you don't want to concede a goal in that period of time. But still, goals do get scored between 0 and 15 minutes, not only against us, they get scored in other games too. So if it really was just as simple a job as to tell them not to do it, then I think uh, you wouldn't see many goals between 0 and 15 minutes. Well, what do you put it down to? Because it does seem to have been a trait that, that's come into, into the team in the last few matches or so. Mm. What does it come down to? Well, you put it down to the fact that in most occasions it's due to the fact we haven't defended well enough. That's the, that's the bottom line. And if you don't defend well, that's when you can see goal chances. And, uh, it's worse for you if those goal chances from your poor defending at any moment in time are at the start of the game because it gives you a, a really uphill struggle to, to get back into the game. But it's, it really isn't quite uh, a case of being able to identify a particular reason why a mistake is made or a piece of defending that you don't want to see happens early in the game. It's, a, it's just a fact, of, a fact of football life. Um, but of course, ideally, those things do happen and you hope you're going to be good enough to, to put it to one side and get back into the game and, and, and put everything right. And we've not been able to do that, either at Leeds or, or West Ham or, or recently uh, Burnley. Can I ask you about, um, there was a banner put up outside the training ground by some Crystal Palace fans that um, suggesting there was an apathy at the club, um, the lack of passion and ideas. What was your response when you turned into the training ground and then saw that banner? 
Well, I didn't see it. I mean, I don't think it, it was up for very long, but I, of course, heard about it. Yeah, you expect the fans, I guess, when, when uh, you give a couple of performances like the last two, which have been way below what we expect of ourselves, to, to, to react and to, to be critical of the performances. I would, I would deny, of course, that it's a lack of interest or desire on the part of the players. We can't deny that we haven't played well enough to get the results in the game. But that, that's a, a fact of life as well. But I, I, would, I would deny that it's because the players are apathetic or they haven't wanted to do better. Um, because I see every day here on the training field how hard people do work, how, how much they do want to do well. But of course, when it doesn't go well, I'm afraid you open yourself up to all sorts of criticism of that nature. It goes very quickly after the results against, against Wolves in Newcastle. The mood was, was positive and the, the criticisms were, were non-existent and in fact a lot of praise was coming the players way. I honestly don't believe that in two weeks and two performances everything has changed to that extent. But we do need to do better than we've been doing in these last couple of games, there's no question of that. And we also do need to get some of our injured players back into the squad again because like all teams we are dependent upon our players. And when you're when you've got a lot of the players on whom you rely on the treatment table and not on the field, it's not going to be clear that you can, you can cover that. Um, we need those players back and in the meantime we must fight on and make certain we do a better job than we've done in the last two games. Do you take it personally at all? When, I mean, you didn't see it obviously, but you've, you've heard about it and they're questioning tactics and, and passion and things like that. I mean, you've seen everything that's good and bad in the game over the years. Do, do you look at that and think, well, do I really need this? What do you mean, do I really need this? What do you mean? I mean well, do, 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 we do don't, you mean, I mean, you're putting in your, your efforts and you're putting your team out there oh. every, every, every week and you think, do, do I need this you know, outside my training ground when I'm coming into work? Well, it's not something that you would encourage. I mean, ideally, our fans have been very, very good through the years and they support us very well. So, you know, for them to do something like this is not something that one can, can claim to be happy about. But I also believe that we've got the wherewithal within the club to, to turn the situation around. And uh, we aren't in a desperate situation in the league, which is, which is something positive anyway. And in the meantime, we must accept that fans have got a right to their opinion. They've got a right to feel upset when the team they love is not doing as well as they would like it to do and we accept as football people that criticism then will come our way so that's that is also a, one of the things you sign up for when you decide to take on a job and be a manager or a coach or a, a team which has a, a big following you expect that hopefully you'll get some praise when it goes well and then you must accept the criticism when it doesn't. And just, just finally from me, when you, you talk about things haven't gone the way the fans might like, but I think if you win the Brighton game, you'll match Palace's best ever Premier League points tally after, after 25 games that they, they've, they've ever achieved. Um, do, do you think it's sort of a misrepresentation if people think that things aren't so, going so great at Crystal Palace at the moment? Because the stats suggest yeah, otherwise. We, we all know that in football. I mean, it's just this is, this is, this is our period. You know, I, I, from afar this season, have seen it happen in, in so many clubs. In fact, I think at the start of the season, uh, Pep Guardiola was being questioned because Man City were lying 14th in the, in the Premier League. We've seen uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at Man United go through several periods, and that's just two that come from the top of my head. This is something which happens all the time in, in our walk of life. I think it's very important that we, as managers, especially we have some experience, keep things in some sort of perspective. And it's also important that we don't necessarily listen or take note of every single criticism because some of those criticisms won't ring true to us because we know what's going on at the club, we know what possibilities we have and we know what people are doing as players and coaches to try and put things right. In the meantime, we mustn't allow anything that's happening in that area to deflect us from what needs to be done. We need to prepare well, we need to get the players that we have at our disposal in a good shape in terms physically, mentally, tactically to play the game against Brighton and then let's hope that in that game we can play well, put, put behind us the last two performances which were not good and then of course things will start to move perhaps in another direction but this is something that happens in, in every year in football 
because it's not many who are going to go through the year without a period where things haven't quite gone their way. Um, right. I, I imagine from a, an injury point of view, Roy, you're uh, sort of happy that it's going to be back down to one game a week, roughly, from now on. That might help you to get certain players back fit. Well, perhaps not, because we're being threatened with a game in between, in between Fulham and, and uh, Tottenham uh, against Manchester United. I don't know whether that has been uh, ratified as yet, but that's been mooted as a, a possibility, which would give us three games in a week, and it would give us uh, four games in under two weeks uh, from, from Monday night's game against Brighton. So I fear that our problems in that respect are going to have to be pushed further down the road. Are we seeing this season just how difficult it is to be consistent in the Premier League? You know, with all of these injuries, with the games, um, so many of them in such a short space of time, does it feel like a lot of the time it's been sort of two steps forward, two steps back in some ways? Well, it has been for us. I mean, amazing enough, we have still kept our head above water, but there's been there's been periods where it looks like we're we're on the on the roller coaster on the way down, only to suddenly find that the the upward slope has, has hit us before we realised it. But we're not the only club, I suppose, to be experiencing that. Um, and there's no doubt that, that in, a, in a club like ours, you know, where the, where the squad is, if not limited, it, it's, not, it's not as uh, profuse, perhaps, as it is in some of the, the clubs above us, we do suffer greatly when the injuries come our way because we rely heavily on the players. Wilf Zaha's name is always mentioned, of course. We, we can't win without him, we're told, and, and people produce the facts to, to document that. But we have to live without him at times, and sometimes in those periods we don't get the results we want. How much then of a testament is it to the strength and depth that you've, you've been able to remain competitive without the likes of, of World Result? Well, I think we have been competitive throughout, throughout the season. Um, I have to be very careful that when you've had two bad performances and, and two bad results that you don't start trying to suggest that everything is great just because you've done okay before that. You know, this is, this is something we have to take seriously. And when the fans are upset because those results have not produced the results or the performances they like, that's also something you have to take very seriously because you know, we play football for the fans, they are the lifeblood of the club. But on the other hand, you have to, as a, as a manager, keep things in some sort of perspective. And that is not always easy, because when things are, are going well, people are encouraging you to, to think very positively and to think that there can never be a problem on the horizon by telling you this is the biggest number of points you've had at this stage of the season and you've never been in the relegation zone in three years. All these type of things people tell you to make you feel good but you've got to put that uh, into the perspective of when things don't go well, and you've had a couple of bad results, you're going to get, or you're going to see the other side of the coin, which is people failing to understand why the performance has not been good enough. And more often than not, people will find reasons for that, which, as a manager and coach working with the players, you can't can't really relate to. Um, Complacency. Well, I, I, I don't see complacency. That's the problem. If, if, if it was there, I would see it. Apathy. I definitely don't see apathy. Players not showing pride or wanting to wear the shirt. I don't really see that either. You know, and I, in training, I think we'll work as hard and do as much as any other team. But football matches tend to throw up a picture, if you like. And if, if it's gone well, the picture is, is very, very rosy and, 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 and everything is, is hunky-dory. If, if it doesn't go so well, that's when you want to see all, all the cracks. Now, the bottom line is it. When you're playing well, there'll still be lots of things that aren't really going as you want it to do. There'll still be players in that team, a winning team, doing less than you want them to do or not showing, if you like, some of the determination or aggression or, or, or desire that you want them to show. By contrast, there are actually players, when you're not doing well, who are showing those things, but it won't be recognised because everyone wants to dismiss the performance as, as, as no interest, no care, no desire, 
It's much more complicated than that. Um, but the one thing that I know for certain is that we, we need to play better than we've played in the last couple of games, and, and everyone's aware of that. We need to get some points on the board because it's now, uh, I think we've taken six from the last six, is it, or six from the last five, and we'd like to do better than that. Um, so that's another important factor. But the only way to do it is to keep working, to keep ensuring that the players are aware of what's required from them, and B, to hope that you get some of the players that you think are quite important for your team back in the team, because we know that every team misses the players that it considers important in terms of helping them to win matches.